so this is where I am with the uh, Mantis Gripper so far. If you don't know what it is that I'm building here, um, look at the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash Mantis Robot. Uh, so this is a gripper mechanism and this is the, the back end of the gripper. Uh, and I, can't, I think the last time I posted a video I had um, these the pins that were holding this together were um, uh, basically 5 8 pins because I couldn't get 16 mil pins long enough uh, so it was all a little bit sloppy but since then I've um, made pins myself so these are proper 16 mil pins in there so this is all tightened up so it's very nice working well um, so what I'm going to look at at the moment is adding feedback onto the joints because all of the, the axes of the pan and tilt head and the gripper uh, are going to be closed loop control so that means I can c uh, control the position of all of them um, uh, via the computer as per all the other axes on the Mantis and what I'm going to be using to close the loop uh, to read the position back of these absolute rotary encoders um, so they're absolute position, so they hold their last position wherever it is. Uh, and these ones happen to be 15 bits, they're really high resolution, so that's 32,768 positions per revolution. Um, and they're nice, kind of really nice little units. I had some of these left over because um, the Mantis originally had four axes per leg, uh, and then we went down to three axes per leg to simplify things, so I had six of these left. Um, and you can see on the end there's a little uh, coupling, it's called a bellows coupling or something similar and then that just goes on there and there's another end to it on the other side where it uh, attaches to the axes and that um, what that allows to happen is misalignment of the two axes so you don't damage the encoder but it still transfers rotation uh, and the only other bit there's a modification there's a there's an aluminium ring here which has a, an oil seal inside of it just to add additional um, waterproofing to the encoder because the cases are all IP67 or 68 but the shaft, I uh, can't think it was IP65, so we added a, a, an oil seal on it as well, uh, just because these are out in the open. Um, so what I'm going to do is look at adding these to all of the axes. I'm going to start with the gripper. So um, this is to uh, detect the open and close of the gripper. Um, and there's a couple of places it can be mounted, but the one other thing I'm going to go for is, is about here somewhere. And what I've got is this... Um, a steel plate already ready uh, which was laser cut which takes the encoder like that and I have to make a couple of standoffs to mount it off of the uh, the main plate here and then the the um, the other end of the bellows coupling will come down onto the um, onto the back end of this pin and all I've done is uh, board the pin out and tapped it to M6 and then I'm going to glue in this um, cap head here which happens to be a 10 mil cap head Sorry, it's a it's an it's a M6 cap here, but it's got a 10 mil head on it, so it fits the bellows couplings uh, perfectly. I'll find the other end of that in a minute and show you. Um, but first, I'm going to make up these spaces and um, and see if it mounts up okay. together pretty well. Uh, so I just made up these um, standoffs out of some 12mm uh, aluminium tube, half inch tube, and they've just got 8mm bolts going down through the middle of them to hold it in place. So the encoder lines up pretty well there, going through the bellows coupling. Um, so that will just come off, there's a couple of pins in the top of it there that clip down through it. And uh, the coupling obviously will keep that encoder from taking any side loads and what have you. So I isolate it from the mechanism. And then the way the encoder is held in place is uh, this is the same as we use on all the axes on the Mantis, these little clips we had machined up. Um, and they go into this slot that sits around the encoder there. And there's three holes around the edge of the plate here, which need tapping to M4. And then you put three of these clips on. And then when you're happy with the encoder in the right place, you just clamp down through the clips, job done. So that's really good. Um, I need to do it on the other couple of axes, three axes. Um, the trickiest one is the rotary axis, uh, the rotate. So there's the big hydraulic um, rotary axis. Um, effectively, what happens with this one is there's, um, this is actually the front, and there's uh, going to be a shaft that passes back through the encoder to the back of the mechanism, and the encoder will sit back here. Um, so this will rotate up here, this bit stays still, and it will rotate the shaft of the encoder. So that's going to be an interesting one to rig up. 
Um, but that's what I'm on to next. Right, I've um, kind of got an idea here. So this is another laser cut plate I had made, which has the same encoder mounting principle on it. So that slides into there, and then three uh, three of the clamps on the back of it eventually to hold it in place. Um, and then the idea being that this is going to be mounted onto the back of the um, the roll actuator. So there's the actuator in the uh, in the tilt uh, axis there, so that would be the tilt axis, obviously, to be facing that way like that, going up and down. And then there's the roll actuator at the end that will tilt the whole mech in front of it. So that would bolt onto here. Now what I've got to do is um, when I take this back off, I've got to countersink the other side so that I can bolt through to the standoffs on the um, on the um, encoder mount because I can't put that on at the moment, I don't have my countersink drill here. Um, but that will sit something like that. And then, like I was saying, so I made this shaft up here. I think it's going to be the right length. Basically that passes through from the front of the encoder off of the gripper head and then attaches to the encoder like that and the whole thing bolts through here. So you end up with this kind of shaft coming through the centre of the rotary axis. Um, so I can kind of might be able to see what that looks like inside the gripper here on the top on the underside of here welded into there is a little um, 10 millimeter collar clamp and that clamps onto the other end of that um, uh, plastic shaft effectively that runs through the rotary axis so the idea being that goes onto there like so, it will be bolted in place, and then that shaft passes down through the collar clamp. And that doesn't want to go through there at the moment. I might need to um, maybe that's clamped up a little bit. Let's have a look. No, that's loose. I might just need to turn down the end of that a little bit because it's not quite fitting into the uh, into the collar at the moment. Uh, okay, no, it's, it's, what the problem is, it's not passing through through the steel plate there. So I'll just buzz that back a little bit further because this is slightly over 10 mil this shaft. So I've had to turn it down to fit the clamp anyway on the um, on the bellows coupling. I just uh, turned down the shaft a little bit further so um, that fits nicely into there now, through into that collar clamp. So this should roughly go together now. So that down there through like that. Uh, that should sit in there. And then that should go on the top. Let's put the uh, bellows coupling back on. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so basically, that would lock off through here. There's a little clamp. It's a half collar split clamp in underneath there. So effectively, when the rotary coupling moves, now the the front to the whole of this axis turns with respect to this, and that passes that shaft through the middle and turns the back of the encoder. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. One last thing before I go. Um, so I, I messed up something on this on this piece here, which is the tilt mechanism, and it's basically where the ring of holes around here, where the uh, rotary actuator attaches to. I um, didn't really check the drawing when I put them in, and the actuator I just assumed they were lined up straight up from the um, clock, so you could plus or minus 90 from here on the actuator. In fact, they're clocked by 22 and a half degrees, so my actuator wouldn't have been in the middle. Uh, so what I've done to rectify that, rather than have all of this remade, 
Uh, I basically made up a jig. The last time, last lot of laser cutting I had done, I made this jig up, which has the original holes and then a new set of pilot holes ready so I can bolt this on and then use this as a guide to drill the new holes out. And the reason why I'm showing this is that if you're using online laser cutting quoting systems, which I think are really good, um, this is a way of making parts much cheaper. So if you'll notice, you can see there, I've joined all the holes up because it doesn't really matter to me that those are joined and there's a slit going between them. And that is because the laser cutting pricing system is based not only on the size of the part material, but also how many piercings the laser has to make. And so this is half the amount of piercings because I'm going in through one hole, doing the hole and then coming up and then doing the rest of the hole and then going back down and finishing off the hole again. So by joining all those holes up, it actually kind of halved the price of the part. Um, so that's just a little tip. If you can do it, it uh, makes things cheaper. Okay, see ya.